Xbox fans are absolutely livid with Microsoft right now. And I have to be honest, I completely agree with them, right? And I'm one of them. I'm like sitting here thinking to myself, Xbox fans that have been long-standing, you know, in the Xbox community, we've all kind of had these thoughts at various times where like, okay, we are Xbox fans. Well, wait till E3, wait till this, wait till that. Like even back to 2018 when Microsoft started buying studios, you know, I knew it would take a while before we started seeing the fruits of those labors, uh, you know, but then we never really got that. We never really got the fruit. It was like, you know, what's going to end up being exclusive after it's all said and done? Something like Redfall, Crackdown 3, and those are only going to be exclusive because why? Because they're not very good games and it wouldn't make sense to port those to PlayStation. So again, you have to make a good game or a great game to be able to sell it. And I can see why fans are upset. But, you know, when this kind of thing happens, I'm kind of questioning myself and exactly what fans like what, what do what do what does what do people expect, to be honest with you? I, I have to be honest, like what do fans expect um, from this situation? Because, you know, at the end of the day, when we see that Microsoft is kind of screwing over fans and and I think most of all the console right they're screwing over the console owners first and foremost like we all want sort of some kind of confirmation that they actually give a damn about the console but we see stuff like this right so I last year everybody was like yeah 2022 was a down year 2023 wasn't great but 2024 is going to be the year man and now of course 2024 being the year has turned into 2025 being the year uh, but again what do we actually get in 2024 hellblade 2 which is no doubt being ported to playstation 5 as we speak and we know that indiana jones is coming to playstation 5 as well we get the beta tested for them for a little bit uh until they get it and they'll probably get a, a version with you know ps5 pro support and better frame rates and resolution and all that kind of stuff now the other game the smaller game towerborn which people were trying to list as some big deal um this game is actually getting a debut on steam but not xbox right this is a first party title that is debuting on steam and not xbox so xbox first party title towerborn might not have received as much attention as the likes of indiana jones and starfield but it's looking like it's going to be somewhat of a fun game at least and it's also had a big announcement of its own not only will the game now be launching as a free-to-play title in 2025 but its early access period begins in september exclusively on steam in an interview as part of xbox gamescom live stream the decision behind this was explained Giving the game in the player's hands is super important to us. We want to have that discussion with the community and have them be a part of the game building process. Getting there, being able to have that and to have the input and take it in, Steam just happens to do that well for us and we want to make sure we're fully prepared for when we come to Xbox Game Preview next year and have an expansive number of players coming in that we're truly ready for and we don't want to disappoint. Now, the thing I want to say is this is clearly utter and asinine bullshit, right? Um, Steam has way more players, right, than Xbox. Uh, no matter what people think, it, it, it's just true. They have way more players than Xbox. Now, the the funny thing is, is why would you not test it on Xbox then? Like, why would you have this thing being played on Steam instead of Xbox? It really makes no sense at all, to be honest with you. And, like, the first party that you see Microsoft kind of touting now, the stuff that they tout, it's like World of Warcraft, that's a PC game. This era game or whatever, that's a PC exclusive. Uh, this game, it's going to be on Steam before it's on Windows or Xbox. Like, what is the deal? It, like, do you guys not see that this is clearly Microsoft pushing, uh, you know, Xbox uh, people to go to, you know, like, pc and and to better that uh steam it's it's so strange to me that they're doing this you know but again for whatever reason i'm not really surprised because microsoft has been treating its console fan base like utter shit for a very long time now and to be quite fair and honest about it i i think that you know it's kind of interesting for multiple reasons but um you know 
there's also makes it very hard to be an Xbox fan, right? Like I can see why Xbox fans are upset. Uh, you know, I'm upset. I think obviously it's pretty clear that Microsoft doesn't really care about the console. They've advertised more for, you know, no console um, than for the actual console itself. Uh, the game, they have nothing in terms of the games uh, actually being, you know, amazing or whatever. Like, we were all expecting to get these these awesome games, these awesome exclusives. They've made promises in the past, you know. Oh, well, you know, Bethesda, we bought them, them to, you know, make exclusives where Game Pass exists. You know, last time I checked, I don't see, you know, uh, exclusives. Uh, I don't see Game Pass on PlayStation. I don't see Game Pass on Switch. Uh, I see Game Pass on Xbox and yet no exclusives. Now, uh, again, people will continually cover for Microsoft and continually say, uh, you know, oh, well, Microsoft is great. Microsoft is is this. They have to do this or they have to do that. You know, Phil Spencer is a great guy. And I've always pointed out that, you know, Phil Spencer hasn't really done much for Xbox, you know, since since the beginning. Like, what has he done realistically that is something to really kind of cheer about like i don't see anything there we haven't got that big game that amazing game that is just that thing that everybody wants to play um you know we just haven't got that and i don't think we're ever going to get that you know starfield maybe was supposed to be that but how on earth does a game that's a first party game from microsoft end up skipping xbox <laughs> <laughs> like, like again, and this isn't the only one. That era game, uh, when Flight Simulator, the first one came out, it was a game that was skipping Xbox completely. Uh, I think it came what a year or so later, or whatever. There's, there's been these instances. But could you imagine Microsoft ever, and I mean ever, um, doing that, right? Where it went the other way, right? Could you ever imagine them doing that? Like, I honestly could not see them doing that at all. Uh, you know, they would never want to uh, hurt their precious PC players or whatever, but they don't really give a shit about the console players, which that's never been, um, you know, what's honestly been uh, something that, 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 that they need to do. So again, I'm sitting here looking at this and thinking to myself, man, they really did screw up. And, you know, the way that these things are going, um, I, I, I just don't see Microsoft being able to compete. And, and I think this is terrible. Like what we're seeing right now is just awful, awful uh, situation for Xbox fans and a really bad situation for, um, you know, Xbox to be in. Because, again, people don't understand it. They go, more people playing a the game. There's nothing to cry over. There's nothing to cry over, crap gamer. You know, but then, you know, the, the funny thing is, right... Um, you, you know, it's not just more people playing the game. Like, that's the thing that I keep saying, you know, to people. It's not just as cut and dry as what you're trying to make it out to be. It's not more people playing the game. It's taking away competition. Like, you could be a PlayStation fan, right? And then, or you'd be an Xbox fan. And you have to understand, if Xbox isn't actively competing, then what good does it do? Because if you look at what Sony's doing, Sony's doing nothing. Like, what has Sony done, right? This might be their la most lackluster generation ever in terms of, you know, uh, first-party games. You know, they took bad risks on terrible-looking uh, games like Concord. Um, you know, they're, they, they won't get a game out from Naughty Dog. It looks like this entire generation, like a new game, it doesn't look like we're going to get one. Naughty Dog basically turned into their own cover band or whatever. Yeah, it's not a great situation uh, to be in. But, you know, I'm still looking at this and I'm still thinking to myself, you know, Microsoft should have been taking advantage of all this. This would have been the perfect time to pounce, not sit there and tell people, well, this is what the whole industry is going to do. Because I do not see the industry ever putting uh, exclusive games you know, where, where Sony puts exclusive games on Xbox. I don't see that happening. And the reason why it won't happen is because nobody owns an Xbox, right? It's like the lowest selling thing. So Microsoft can try to prop up this whole, we've got more console players playing more hours than ever. They can try to prop that up for as long as they want. But at the end of the day, those Xbox One games aren't going to get supported forever. And at some point, there's going to be a cutoff. And I think you're going to see a drastic drop in Xbox profits and all that kind of stuff. So... We'll see what happens. Short-term gain for long-term losses. That seems to be the game that Microsoft is playing. 
Rack 'em up. Thanks for watching. Crap Gamer out.